in conclusion, <laughs> all of the choices that you make, all of the brand decisions you make, all of the colors that you choose and the tagline that you pick, all the books that you write, everything that you do on your website, the social media platforms you use, the marketing you choose, the business structure you choose, all, every, every single choice that you make ultimately points back at you. Your readers don't have to know that. <laughs> Maybe you are doing a magical illusion that it's all pointing back to your books. But in truth, it all points back to your books because your books all point back to you. They are a product of you and your brain and your values and your personality and your style and your preferences and who you are. Your books reflect that and so does your brand and so does every choice that you make. Your brand ultimately comes back to the story of who you are and what your values are and what is important to you. And again, your readers don't have to know that, but you have to know that. And so when your reader encounters your brand, you need to choose and decide what parts of yourself you want them to ultimately see. Think for a second about a celebrity, uh, an actor or an author or a politician or an activist that you are familiar with but that you don't know personally. How does that person make you feel? Or how does that person, um, what sorts of ideas bubble up when you think about that person? For example, I'll give you some examples. Jamila Jamil is an actress and um, an activist. And I follow her um, and her I Weigh movement. And when I think about Jamila Jamil, I think about someone who is opinionated and strong-willed who is thoughtful, who is inspiring and strong. Um, and I don't know her personally. <laughs> All I know is what she chooses to share on Instagram or with newspapers or whatever. Um, I don't know her good days and her bad days. I don't know how her personality manifests in real life. I, I mean, I've watched interviews with her and stuff like that, but I don't personally know her, right? But I still have an impression. Um, another example, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I know she just died. I, when I think of her, I think of someone who's powerful. I think of someone who is opinionated. She makes me want to take action. She makes me want to vote. She makes me want to do stuff. I think of her as being angry, but like um, in the sense of like purposefully angry, you know, using anger to... Um, to drive her as opposed to reacting in anger, that kind of anger. Um, again, I don't know her personally. I never met her. <laughs> All I know are the stories that I've heard about her, the news articles I've read about her, quotes that I've read that she of things that she's said. I have an impression of her. I don't personally know her. Um, and then the third example I came up with is Terry Pratchett. Again, never met him. I mean, he died, what? four years ago now or five years ago now. Um, but when I think of Terry Pratchett, I think of someone who's curious. I think of someone who's like hearted, hopeful, a little critical of society. But you know what's interesting about Terry Pratchett? As I, Neil Gaiman and, and him wrote a book together, right? And so after Terry Pratchett died, I read an article. Um, Neil Gaiman had done an interview with a, some sort of magazine or newspaper. And Neil Gaiman said, you know, something about... Uh, he was talking about Terry Pratchett. He was like, you know, something you might not know about Terry Pratchett is that he was a very angry person, driven, motivated, but there was just this underlying rage. I would never have known that about Terry Pratchett if Neil Gaiman hadn't shared that in an interview. I don't think of Terry Pratchett as angry, you know? Think about the Discworld series, you know? Um, it's funny. It's light. For the most part, he deals with some really deep stuff. He's very thoughtful and intelligent um, in his books. He, he can be very, you know, satirical. You know, there's some great stuff in his work. But I never would have thought that he was angry because he didn't choose to share that as part of his author brand. This is a shallow feeling. We don't know them personally. We don't know their ups and downs. We don't know their flaws and their failures. We don't know how they react to a particular situation in a particular moment from a personal and more intimate perspective. 
So instead, we create these impressions. But these impressions are still impactful, you know? Jamila Jamil composed a very, like, pointed 10-word sentence on the internet and make me want to go vote, you know? That is powerful. I don't know her personally. I'm reacting to an impression. I'm reacting to her brand. So now think about this from your own perspective. Flip the question around. How do you want people to think of you? How do you want people to behave after they've encountered your work? And most importantly, how do you want them to feel? What is your brand promise? What are you promising that your reader is going to experience, whether they're encountering your brand or your actual writing? What are you promising that your reader is going to feel, whether they're encountering your brand or your writing? It is the most important question, and it might change, and that's okay. But in order to create a clear, concise, and cohesive author brand, it is the number one most important question. What is important to you? And how do you want that to impact or influence your reader?